This is the OFN today as we take a look once again at the college football semifinals. Last week, we had Kevin Noonan from BuckeyeGrove.com to talk Ohio State football. This week, he returns, Phil Kornblut. He's been covering South Carolina sports talk on the spot on the on, excuse me on the sports talk radio network at sports talk SC. Phil, thanks for taking the time to talk to us again. Hey, Greg, good to be with you. Happy New Year. Yes, you too. A couple more hours, and then we can finally get rid of this crappy 2020. For sure, for sure. But the Clemson Tigers, they just keep rolling on. So that's the one constant in the college football universe is Clemson. Alabama in the finals, or at least the semifinals, are going to try to make it to the finals again. But one big step for Clemson is Ohio State. And Clemson has owned Ohio State over the last uh, several years in these same situations. They've beaten Ohio State all three. They've covered all three, even though this is the first time in the series, I believe, where the spread has been this big. It's up to seven and a half. Clemson is the favorite in the game. Uh, What do you see as different from... Obviously, the Clemson point of view, what is different from this Clemson team from the Clemson teams over the last couple of years? Because everyone will talk and it's sexy to talk about Trevor Lawrence and he's going to be a a superstar at the NFL level and all the other Travis Etienne and so forth. But the one constant for Clemson has been the defense. They have been a top 10 defense now since 2014. And that was two years prior to hiring Brett Venable. So a little bit of uh, coincidence there that Brett Venables comes on board and the Clemson defense is a top 10 unit every year, and they've got one again this year. Oh, absolutely. And let me point out that Ohio State all-time has 930 wins, none against teams from the state of South Carolina. Wow. They are 0-2 against the Gamecocks. Remember, Lou Holtz beat them in back-to-back years in the Outback Bowl back in the early 2000s. And Clemson is, I want to say, um, well, 4-0 oh, no, against yeah. Ohio State. This will be their fifth meeting, the third time in the playoffs. So they've never gotten a team from the Palmetto State. So we're we're, we're proud uh, about that and talking about Clemson, Ohio State. But, yeah, this is um, a very, very good Clemson team when all its pieces are there. Now, you know, Dabo Sweeney said today that one scholarship player – is not available, and one walk-on is not available because of COVID testing. We don't know who they are. We'll find that out tomorrow. And, of course, Tony Elliott, the play caller, the uh, offensive coordinator, the running backs coach, uh, he's not going to be there because of COVID, but he's done all his work, all his installation. I think they're very confident in their uh, plan of secession there. You know, Dabo uh, Sweeney prides himself on having a plan ready for everything, and he believes he had the proper plan ready in this case. Tony Elliott goes down, Brandon Streeter slides in, and C.J. Spiller goes down and coaches the running okay. backs. So organized organized uh, beyond uh, approach is, is Dabo Sweeney. So, you know, you got the great quarterback uh, comparison here between Lawrence and Fields. That should be a classic. You've got, um, well, is it going to be Sermon? Is it going to be Master? Who's going to – Master Teague? Who, who's – Who's going to carry the ball for uh, Ohio State? I mean, Sermon was unbelievable against Northwestern. Clemson, you know that ETN is going to get his ball in the hands uh, in a variety of ways. They've they've used him a lot more as a pass receiver this year. That's why maybe uh, the rushing numbers aren't what they have been because he hasn't run the ball quite as much. Um, And they've limited his carries, but they've gotten him very involved in the passing game. Uh, so, you know, that, that'll be an interesting, um, comparison between those two sides of the, of the ball. Um, and you mentioned the defense when healthy, I mean, Clemson's defense is as good as anybody's and they rank right up there once again in most of the categories as uh, the nation's best. Now they will be without their starting safety, Nolan Turner for the first half. And, you know, that could be a, uh, that could be key. Um, they've had some issues back there when they've had to dive into their depth. They got hurt in the Notre Dame game up in South Bend in that double overtime loss because they were playing a lot of young defensive backs and and they had some breakdowns. So that'll be something to watch early on. Are we going to see, Does uh, will they put Kendrick on Olave for most of the game or is that not how Clemson runs their defense? They don't run their defense that way. They don't, they don't necessarily match up. I mean, Kendrick will have once his side of the field 
I believe. Um, you know, and and they'll they'll throw some zone in there, of course. Uh, but who knows what what Venables will decide uh, to do? He he may come up with something you know, totally out of the ordinary from from that standpoint. But um, pretty much they keep Kendrick. Uh, I believe he he plays to the field side, uh, and and pretty much stays over there most of the time. Now you know again it could be a case where when you want to put your best corner on their best receiver, you can move him around. But and the thing with Kendrick, I mean he's. He's not had that great a year because um, he's kind of been in and out of the doghouse. Really? Abo Sweeney won't call it the doghouse. He calls it his love shack. Okay. But there's there's been some, I, I don't know, you know, things today are so tight with information. Coaches don't want to say a whole lot about anything. But uh, I don't know if it's related to effort, uh, academics, uh, attitude, whatever the case may be. But, uh, yeah, he's kind of been in and out of things this year um i mean still a great talent and still considered a prime nfl prospect when that time comes for him but he hasn't had that um that individual great year that was expected going in and that could change if he puts together a couple of big games here over the next couple of weeks because uh, this is definitely where the spotlight's going to shine uh, right now he's the fifth rated cornerback for our lads so uh but look, we'll, if we'll see, like you said, if he gets matched up, if he gets matched up on Olave, Ohio State's top wide receiver prospect, our lads number four wide receiver prospect, actually. So that would be nice. I'm sure they're gonna go one on one at least a few times. So we'll see how that works out. And I think it's interesting because you know you take a look at all the players that have been that have gone into the NFL over the last couple of years from Clemson on the defensive side of the ball. And, and, and I look on defense and we still look, we know there's talent there, uh, but the, you, you, the two, two, two guys that lead the team in sacks for four each are both freshmen, five-star kids, uh, Trenton Simpson and miles Murphy. That's still the future, but now you will also the present. Uh, who's the best defender on the team. Do they have one of those guys? Well, I think the most important defender on the team, if you ask anybody, is James Skowski, yep. the middle linebacker. Uh, when he was out against Notre Dame, he was out for a few games, and teams tried to attack Clemson up the middle because he's such a presence there against the run. So you would probably call him the, the single most important, the, probably the most talented defensive player right now is the freshman Brian Bressy. Or you could say the sophomore Tyler Davis, or you could say the other freshman defensive end, uh, Miles Murphy. I mean, they're all uh, really good, really talented players, and they've all um, stood out in one way or another. When they played Notre Dame in their in their lone loss earlier this year, they didn't have Skowski, mm -hmm. they didn't have uh, Davis, they didn't have Mike Jones, the other linebacker. Uh, they were thin in the secondary, you know, variety of things, injuries, COVID, uh, whatever you want to cite. Uh, but they're, they seem to be healthy now going into this one. That's why I think you're, you're going to see a, a really solid uh, defensive effort by this group, a really good game plan from, um, from, from Venables. You know, I want to go back on Kendrick. Yeah, he's missed three games this year. He missed the opener, then he missed the Syracuse game, and then he missed the game against Pittsburgh. Um, he's had one pick this year. He's broken up five passes. He's got 20 tackles. So uh, he has flashed, but again, in and out of the lineup for whatever reason. And uh, talk about uh, Spectre, because Spectre, just a, another body when, you, when, when you're outside of Clemson looking in. Statistically, you don't notice him. But this season, he's elevated his game. He leads the team with 62 tackles. Second on the team with nine and a half tackles for loss and three and a half sacks. So, uh, what kind of a and he's he's a senior, so he's one of the he's one yeah. of the leaders, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is, he is, and uh, you know he's paid his dues. You know he's not the most talented guy. No, he's not the fastest guy, um, but he knows his position. Um, he he fills a role. He's a leader, and, and he does make plays. You hit it on the on the head there with the stats. So he does he does make his plays. And uh, handles his handles his role well. So, I mean, they've got some good young linebackers. You know, the, the Trent Simpson 
kid is just, uh, you know, he's he's right there waiting to play. Kane Patterson, uh, Keith McGuire, uh, Levante Bentley, uh, Sergio Allen. These are all freshman linebackers who've been kind of waiting. Uh, Kevin Swint is another. So they've got a, a boatload of freshman linebackers, uh, young players just waiting to get their opportunity. Um, in Spectre's case and in Mike Jones' case, uh, the veteran guys, along with um, Skowski, you know, they've they've been able to hold on to their jobs despite these talented freshmen coming onto the scene. Uh, if you had to pick one of the one of the freshmen, and you've named a bunch, and there's a lot of a lot of talent, a lot of five star kids, uh, if you had to pick one that will make a name for himself, a guy that you just feel, you know what, maybe this is going to be. Maybe this is the matchup, or maybe this is just I, I get the feeling he's been ready to break out and he's gonna he's gonna make a name for himself nationally on Friday night. Who would you pick? Well, I mean, Brissy has already been identified as a big time player. He was the freshman defensive player of the year in the ACC. Mm -hmm, sure. So you'll probably see a lot out of him up front uh, trying to put pressure on Ohio State. Ohio State's had a you know a little bit of issue. Uh, a little bit of issue on their offensive line. And, you know, one in particular seems to be singled out, and that's Harry Miller, a sophomore left guard, I think it is. And reading about this, this team and some of the analysis, he's kind of had a – he's had sort of an iffy kind of season for them. He might be that so-called weak link on the offensive line. In fact, he's a guy – he's out of Buford, Georgia. He's a guy that Clemson heavily recruited okay. but lost out to Ohio State. Um, so, I mean, you could see uh, if, if Bressy is lined up against him, whoever is lined up against him, uh, maybe having an opportunity to get into the backfield and disrupt Justin Fields, kind of like Northwestern did in the Big Ten championship game there for a little bit. But he would be one. Now, if you're talking about somebody um, kind of off the beaten path, I would say Trent Simpson okay. uh, would be one linebacker. He'll be a, in a backup role, but he played 75 snaps in that loss up at Notre Dame and had seven tackles, played 25 snaps in the ACC championship game. He's gotten more and more play, and he's he's a very athletic linebacker, runs extremely well, and, um, you know, is good at – you can use him as a blitzer. You can use him dropping back in coverage. Um, so – that could be one, depending on situations and how much playing time he gets, that could be a guy that ordinarily you wouldn't think about who might go out there and um, ma and make some noise uh, in that game. Okay, offensively, you, you touched up on Etienne, a little bit more receiving this season. Four years has been leading the team. Uh, we talked the uh, last time we had an opportunity uh, on the Kane Sports Show with Gary Furman uh, before that matchup. You know how highly I, I think of Etienne. Uh, he's almost had 5,000 yards rushing over his career, 69 rushing touchdowns. He's our lad's number one rated running back. Uh, and then Amari Rogers leads the team in receiving. Uh, and we all know about Trevor Lawrence. But I want to ask you about a couple other guys first, and that's Cornell Powell, the team's number two receiver, and offensive tackle Jackson Carmen, you know, a five-star who's right now a four, the fourth rated. Offensive tackle for our lads for the 2021 NFL Draft. So, again, you know about the big guys, but let's talk a little bit about Powell and Carmen. Uh, what kind of players are we dealing? What, what kind of players? If if the average fan hasn't really zeroed in on these guys yet, uh, tell us a little bit about them. Well, you know Powell's a kid that's paid his dues, waited his time, and he was out of North Carolina, a pretty heavily recruited guy. But he was over-recruited by Clemson with all the players they were bringing in, Justin Ross and this most recent group, E.J. Williams and Frank Lanson and Ajoa Joe. You mentioned they had Amari Rogers. Um, and so they, you know, Clemson recruits extremely well at the receiver spot, as you yeah. well know. Then they lose Justin Ross for the season with his spinal situation. And then uh, Ladson's – Latson's hurt. Joe Joe is, is hurt. Or when you say hurt, not available, either hurt or COVID, okay. whatever the case may be. So Powell gets the opportunity to step up and he has responded in a huge way. I mean, he has become that, well, they've really got three go-to receivers in Rogers 
and Powell and uh, and EJ Williams now. Okay. And, and you throw in Galloway uh, at wide receiver at, at tight end. They have two tight ends really. Galloway's a tight end who can get down the field and stretch it. And and Davis Allen is just that that guy around the in the red zone who scores touchdowns for you. Or if you need to pick up third and five on a little dump off, he's a good candidate there. Okay. So in the case of Powell, it's just been his time now because of what has happened with the roster. He got his opportunity and he was ready and, and he stepped up and, and he's been um, he's been fabulous for him. And the other one you asked about was Jackson Carmen. Jackson Carmen. Well, you know, he's he's apparently uh, he's done a nice job. I, I think when you don't notice a left yeah. tackle, you, he's done a nice yeah. job. I, I don't know that there's been major issues over there. He's handled his work pretty quietly. We haven't heard much from him in terms of interviews and all that. And there hasn't been a lot of talk about yeah. him. So I, I think that means that Robbie Caldwell, the offensive line coach, and Dabo Sweeney feel like he's handling his his chores over there quite well. So, um, you know, this this is a, a matchup for him. Of course, he was in it last year, too. He's an Ohio kid. He's a guy Clemson uh, took from Ohio State and was a huge uh, recruiting win uh, for the Tigers when they got him. And he's made that – he's continued making that left side. I mean, the Tigers have had seven years now of solid play at left tackle from Mitch Hyatt to Jackson Carmen. Yep. So yeah, that goes along with their seven years of – well, six years of Deshaun Watson uh, to Trevor Lawrence. So they've had that solidity at quarterback and that solidity at left tackle. And, you know, that's that's – not many teams can point to that. That's right. And we'll see. That's why I was interested. Not, well, of course, we'll find out more once we get past the season. But uh, there has been so much talent to come out of Clemson. You named a few of them up front. Uh, we haven't yet seen, though, that superstar in that next level in the NFL at that position. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if, if uh, Carmen can possibly be the guy uh, that could actually be a big-time player at the next level. Uh, that is possible. Again, he's the fourth-rated tackle right now for our lads at this point in time. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, career high, 69% completion percentage. Have you noticed anything different this year from uh, his previous uh, years uh, as far as the way he he goes about handling himself, uh, whether it's off the field or definitely on the field? Well, he's always handled himself smoothly off the field. He's just, you know, a natural with interviews. He's calm. He's polite. He's observant. He's responsive. He's thoughtful when it comes to his responses, so nothing's changed there. I think on the field, I think he's done a little bit more with his footwork and with his ball handling, with his uh, play faking, carrying things out a little bit more, a little more finesse in that area. The arm is the arm. That hasn't changed. He still can make all the throws. And, you know, sometimes, like all these quarterbacks, he thinks he can throw it through anything, and it gets him into Mm -hmm. trouble. It's happened a couple of times. Uh, But – I think by and large that you'll see the biggest difference in him. Uh, maybe his footwork is a, a little bit better and his ball faking is a, a little bit better too. And maybe some things with his um, shoulder motions, for example, he will uh, shoulder fake a safety to one side and come back to the other side. Uh, things like that, that I think he's added to his uh, arsenal since last year. All right. And Etienne, uh, he is a force and uh we saw what happened with Alabama, uh, Harris in their ch- championship game against Florida, the big game that he had. I just, I don't know. I get the feeling that we're going to see Etienne have one of those types of games. I don't know if it's going to be Friday. They, they win the game and they get to the championship game. Maybe that'll be it. But uh, like you were saying, it's almost like he's had too quiet of a season. And so it's like, w- w- when's the breakout coming? And I get the feeling maybe it'll come on Friday night. Possible. It all depends on how much they feel they need to write yeah. and what they're able to do. Uh, again, you go back to the last game for Ohio State against Northwestern, and Northwestern hit them for a few good runs, but not that many. They finished with 105 rushing yards. And, of course, that was a tight ball game uh, into the latter stages before oh, Ohio yeah. State put nine on the board to to pull away there at the end. Um, is Ohio State vulnerable to some things defensively, I think so. I think that uh, they do have some areas of concern. I think they lost a lot of really good people off that team last year. I'm not sure that they successfully 
uh, replace them equivalently with talent, especially in the secondary. You remember those corners they had last year? And um, I think Clemson uh, and other teams this year have had some success against Ohio State's defense. They gave up a bunch of points to Indiana, uh, points to Penn State. Um, uh, Rutgers put points on the board against them. So, I mean, if Rutgers can score on you, what does that? What do you think Clemson can oh, do? Oh yeah. So, I, I think Clemson's. I, I'll be honest with you, Gary. I, I think this is not going to be a close oh, game. To me. Right. I don't think this is going to be like last year, where Ohio State jumped up, had that lead. Clemson had to come from behind. Um, I, I don't see that happening. I, I think if Clemson just protects the football and and does what it does best, and and that is sort of dictate terms. Uh, offensively with what they do. I think they're going to put their points on the board. Then I think their defense will handle uh, Ohio State enough. I mean, Ohio State's going to score, but, you know, they they kicked a lot of field goals against Northwestern, and kicking field oh, goals yeah. against Clemson is not going to get it done. <laughs> nope. So, and, and Fields is playing with a, with a bum yes. thumb, too. You wonder about how that's going to impact him. Yep. Yeah, I actually, as a Jet fan – I don't want I, we talked about Trevor Lawrence a month or so ago and how the possibilities were so exciting for Jet fans. But that's down the drain. He'll be headed to Jacksonville. We all know that. Um, and now everybody in the New York media talk. All right. Well, is it going to be Fields? Is it going to be this guy? That, and I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I don't think Fields is, is the second best player in the draft. I don't think he's I don't I, I just don't see him and Lawrence on the same in the same stratosphere. I just don't. I think he's a good player. Yeah. I think he should probably go around 10, 12, 15, not two. I just don't think he's that type of guy. I think he's benefited because Ohio state talent they have around there. He could sit there all day. He can pick what he wants to do with the football, but look what happened against Northwestern. Yes. He had the thumb injury, but you know, whatever, if you're injured, then sit, you know, sit, sit, sit you know, you're not going to play in the game. So don't give me that excuse. Uh, that's what happened when he played a good defense. Well, he he has to elevate his game big time in this game. He's got to prove it to a lot of people that he is the second potential quarterback in this draft class. But I'm with you. I, Clemson's my pick not only to win this game, but to win the whole thing. Well, we'll talk about Alabama next time. Yes. <laughs> I Let's mean, hope that's we can do that other, next week. That's a whole nother deal. Oh, it is. Uh, yes, it so is. I'm not sure yet which way I'll lean up. Let's see how – if Alabama mops up Notre Dame like Clemson did in the ACC championship game. And, look, they they are so impressive, so impressive in so many ways. Um, I mean, that will get us back to the game, I guess, that everybody wants to see. As boring as it is to <laughs> see the same two teams almost every yeah. year, that's where we are right now, you know. And can you point – I mean, after we see what happens tomorrow, in all likelihood, Clemson and Alabama taking care of their business – There'll be no argument that they're the two sure. best teams in the country, yeah. and that's the way the system is right, right now. No, look, I, I, I'm, I, I want to see, like you said, let's see what Alabama's defense does against Notre Dame's offense, because Florida moved the ball at will, and I, I just, I'm not overly impressed with Alabama's defense. So maybe, yeah. maybe it was a matchup thing. I don't know, but all right, let's see what you do against Notre Dame, because if Notre Dame puts over 20, 25, 30 points on the board. Uh, I feel pretty good about Clemson's chances if they can get past Ohio State, which we both believe they're going to do. So, yes, sir. Bill, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I will hopefully get an opportunity to talk to you next week uh, if Clemson takes on either Notre Dame or Alabama. And I know you're busy, so thanks for taking your time out to talk to us again. Always a pleasure, and look forward to talking to you next week.